So, manuals are a kid's best friend, right? Well, for me, it was true. Back when I was in elementary school, I was obsessed with my baby pink Nintendo DS. What I truly got a kick out of were the games. I wasn't at all choosy when it came to deciding which ones to play, but I did adhere to a golden rule about every single game I ultimately received. And that was to read its manual cover to cover before ever unloading the small piece of machinery into my DS. See, reading the manual allowed me to think that I was an expert on something. I didn't care about just how specialized the knowledge I had acquired was. I just felt powerful knowing that every time the trademark Nintendo jingle filled my room, I was an expert. Sadly, and yet somewhat predictably, the self-assuredness didn't last very long. Knowing the game's controls allowed me to cruise through its initial stages and levels, but it didn't teach me about anything necessary to make actual progress, the ability to think on my feet and for myself. Just knowing that pressing A and the up arrow at the same time would let Mario jump over the hump didn't teach me how to beat level three, just as memorizing vocab words didn't turn me into an articulate speaker or mastering different ballet positions wouldn't make me a choreographer. Sure, I knew the technical details of things, but technical details took me only so far. So at a young age, I accepted that there was no way I would know all there was to about something, and I stopped worshiping game manuals. Years later, my ventures into the world of dance, research, and programming in particular have only served to affirm this belief. Today, I think that the best way to be good at computer science, or really anything I try my hand at in general, is to accept that I'll never quite master it completely. Only then am I able to open myself up to learning more. Sounds counterintuitive, right? It isn't. This philosophy delivers to me the freedom to explore, the freedom to create, and the freedom to, most importantly, dive headfirst into anything and simply learn. This philosophy is why today, every time I open a text editor on my laptop, I'm not afraid to code something that doesn't work. In fact, I expect it. And in expecting it, I'm able to code without restraint, rebound from my mistakes quickly and efficiently, and create something that, do that does work faster than I would have otherwise. Because of this philosophy, I'm no longer paralyzed when I stumble over my words in a speech or have a hard time solving a particularly difficult integral in my math homework. Instead, I have the courage to, ta to tackle difficulty, face it head on, and simply move forward and continue learning. I'm able to face uh, whatever it comes my way, be it technical issues or emotional. Because after all, it's a lot easier to carry a conversation with someone when you're not nervous about how quirky you sound. It's because of this philosophy that today, I'm able to walk into any lecture hall and any class that I take in school and ask questions without fear of not knowing something, because chances are I probably don't. With every question I ask, I unearth a new piece of the puzzle, and I learn as much as I possibly can. This philosophy is one that I, I try to encourage everyone I meet to follow. Manuals are great, but they also stunt creativity. They create an illusion of knowledge, but abandoning them allows us to forge our own knowledge. Taking steps towards embracing this philosophy has allowed me to defy my own misconstrued views on learning, and also led me to accept that there will always be stuff out there for me to absorb. As much as this scares me, it excites me even more. After all, life doesn't come with a manual, but even if it did, I probably wouldn't read it. <laughs> manuals, schmanuals. Today, my best friend is curiosity. Thank you.